Former Vice President Mike Pence will not appeal a ruling requiring him to testify before a grand jury as part of the special counsel investigation into the January 6th riot at the Capitol. For more on what this means, as well as the 2024 GOP presidential race, and some news about a surprising new entrant into the 2024 race, I'm joined by CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. Robert, thank you so much for being here. So what does this news about Mike Pence mean for the special counsel investigation. It's a significant development in the January 6th federal investigation of Trump and his allies about January 6th because now you're getting someone who talked to Trump again and again in the run-up to the Capitol attack about the scheme Trump had tried to put in place to stay in power. Pence had one-on-one -on -one conversations with Trump about that, about that so-called Eastman plan written by conservative lawyer John Eastman. And Pence has been so careful for so many years about not disclosing what Trump has said to him in private. Now he has said by a judge's order that he will testify, he won't contest it anymore, and he will talk about some of those conversations. The judge is saying, you don't have to talk about your role in Congress on January 6th, mm -hmm. but you do have to talk about any illegal acts. And so this creates such a political minefield for Mike Pence as he decides whether to run for president. He's been in that minefield for quite some he time. He has. He has a lot of experience with it, perhaps more than anyone else. And yet he has been so careful uh, to, to be very measured in his criticism of the former president. And now he's going to uh, potentially uh, go in there and, and spill secrets that he hasn't told anyone about for years. I bet Pence wouldn't say he's going to spill any tea or, or secrets on Trump, but he's going to recount conversations. And even if he does not believe there was criminal intent in those conversations, that won't be up to Pence to ultimately conclude. Right. The special counsel and the grand jury will move toward a conclusion at some point. What I'm really curious about is what does Pence say to the grand jury about January 5th, 2021, the eve of the insurrection where Pence had that now almost infamous Oval Office meeting with Trump one-on-one. -on -one. That was the peak of the pressure campaign on Pence. I remember during the course of my reporting, someone told me that when Pence walked out of the Oval Office on January 5th in the evening, he looked almost uh, white as a ghost. Uh, like someone said, compared him to someone being at a hospital getting bad news, mm -hmm. kind of the drained look, because he had just been through this arduous conversation with the president of the United States. Well, what did Trump say? We don't really know. We've had some reporting on it about a tough conversation they had about Trump really leaning on Pence to do his bidding. But what exactly was said under oath is something entirely different. The special counsel could get that. Uh, it's obviously been a challenging week for the former president, for the people around him. Uh, you talk to them often. How is Trump world feeling about his 2024 bid after his indictment and after the news that they got about uh, his former running mate and vice president? Projecting confidence, but the key word there is projecting. I mean, mm -hmm. they know that Nikki Haley, the former U.N. ambassador, has just announced she has raised $11 million. So it's not like that campaign is flagging. She's not catching up to Trump in any way in the polls, but she's showing at least financially an ability to compete. They know that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has been generally supportive of Trump during this moment of uh, legal crisis. But DeSantis hasn't seemed to waver from running down the line, whether he announces in the late spring or summer. That remains to be determined. And they still see DeSantis as a real threat should he jump into the race. You had a real bombshell yesterday, which is uh, not only that uh, RFK Jr., uh, the son of uh, Robert F. Kennedy, grandson of John F. Kennedy, is planning to get into this presidential race as a Democrat, um, well, announcing nephew, in Boston. Nephew, nephew, Jake, yeah. You're right, sorry. Uh, uh, getting into the race later this month, announcing in Boston, but also that Steve Bannon, mm. the GOP provocateur, uh, was leaning on him, encouraging him heavily to do this. And Bannon hasn't more. been hiding it. If you listen to Bannon's uh, television show, podcast, radio show, it's called The War Room, and it doesn't get a lot of mainstream attention, but it is sometimes a signal Mm -hmm. of what's happening on that wing of the right, the kind of the far right of the GOP. And Bannon has been encouraging Robert F. Kennedy on air in terms of his anti-vaccine campaign for months, if not years now, promoting RFK Jr.'s book that was highly critical of Dr. Anthony Fauci. And you see Bannon privately, based on our reporting at CBS News, being someone who has told Robert F. Kennedy and his associates in various ways that a run for the presidency 
could be viable in terms of bringing together that anti-vax coalition in the Democratic race. Of course, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. against an incumbent like President Biden, uh, even, even Robert F. Kennedy Jr. fans would acknowledge that's a long shot of long shots. But it is notable politically in the sense that there is a segment of this country mm -hmm. that is anti-vaccine, uh, angry about what happened during the pandemic, and no one has really tried to politically activate them for the 2024 race up until this moment. Now, RFK Jr. is going to test whether that's an actual coalition. And you don't have to get a lot of votes to be a spoiler. You know, he's somebody who, whether or not he has a huge constituency, he has a lot of name recognition. There are Democrats who recall his environmentalism, maybe don't know as much about, uh, you know, the, the accusations against him uh, for spreading misinformation about vaccines. And it's clear that someone like Bannon would love for RFK Jr. to potentially be the Ralph Nader of 2024. And we don't know about the rest of the 2024 race. Does DeSantis actually run or not? Mm -hmm. Does Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia, or Larry Hogan, the former Maryland governor, decide to run as a third party, no labels ticket? This is something that's in the discussion, at least among some donors. Manchin hasn't dismissed the idea outright in any way. So we're looking at a very unsettled 2024 presidential race where the former president is not only facing a possible trial in New York, but a possible indictment for conspiracy on the federal level, all while this no labels group hovers over a possible third party campaign. And as RFK Jr. tries to stoke the anti-vax movement into a, a real political activist group uh, that has political power. Uh, how this all plays out, all as President Biden, who you cover every day, hasn't yet put a fine point on when he's announcing, means we're in a moment, a crossroads of uncertainty. Right. A lot of questions in the Democratic Party about when exactly and if he will. And Governor Newsom of California is making a lot of trips around the country, not running, but certainly getting his name out there. No question. He's uh, waiting in the wings. Robert Costa, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.